please note, most responses are heard upon review and not in real time. Changes in the video's filter visually mark the replies that were the most significant. Those various audio responses have been enhanced, repeated, and sometimes slowed down. As always, we do not offer this video as irrefutable evidence of the paranormal, nor do we claim our annotations are 100% conclusive. All we're asking is that you please approach the data presented here with a curious mind, and that you wear damn headphones. Police found the remains of five people on Baumeister's Hamilton County estate. Last week, Baumeister killed himself in a park in Ontario, Canada. Investigators have told News 8 he shot himself in the head, leaving a suicide note that discussed many things, but not the discovery of the bones at his estate. Police have not publicly identified Baumeister as a suspect, but privately, officials have told News 8 he was under suspicion. Herb Baumeister, the name that is now immortalized as quite possibly one of the most prolific serial killers in United States history. Herb is responsible for the slayings of 11 but possibly upward of 20 victims in the mid-90s whose bones were found charred and scattered across his Carmel, Indiana property known as Fox Hollow Farm. Only eight of the victims have been identified. It doesn't end there. Herb is also the prime suspect in the I-70 Strangler murders. The I-70 Strangler is responsible for the slayings of 9 to 16 teenagers and men ranging in the age from 15 to 29 in Indiana and Ohio in the late 80s and early 90s. The connecting thread with most of Herb's victims is that they all had ties to the Indiana gay community and gay bar scene. Most notable was the 501 Eagle in Indianapolis where Herb, under the alias of Brian Smart, would meet and lure victims back to his lair by enticing them with a swim in his indoor pool, which led to games of erotic asphyxiation and ended in death. A year ago, I was granted access to the now closed 501. A close friend of mine has been spending a lot of time in that location getting it set up for a new business. After experiencing a few unexplained events, he asked me to visit and to do a paranormal investigation. And beyond getting a few sexually explicit ITC responses that were definitely relevant given the space's history, on the surface, I couldn't connect any significant tragedies to the location that could clearly pin the haunted claims on the donkey, so to speak. I was willing to accept the idea that heightened emotions, much like a theater, had drawn spirits into the space. That was until a few weeks later, when Jason, my friend, had a conversation with former patrons of the 501, and they told him of her Baumeister's connection to the address. And after that, so did a couple Indianapolis police officers. That revelation could be the catalyst for the hauntings. The 501 seemed to be Herb's preferred hunting ground to locate his victims. Over three years ago, I had the opportunity to investigate Fox Hollow Farm, and after getting sexually explicit ITC responses there too, as well as names of victims, and possibly an EVP from Herb himself. Say who you are. I personally experienced the psychic carnage that Herb's murderous rampage had left, but did his killing spree leave a paranormal wake in its trail? Could I make a connection to Herb Baumeister and the paranormal happenings at the 501 Eagle, or was I grasping at ghost draws trying to create a hypothetical narrative? Well, there is only one way to find out. And on September 4th of 2021, Jason assembled a group of paranormal investigators, including myself, Gene and Vince Caswell, and Jeff Bodart, to descend on the 501 Eagle on the hunt for Herb Baumeister. Just a few details about the investigation. As the old 501 has been getting outfitted for its newest business incarnation, I noticed that the EMF of the space has increased significantly, which wrecked havoc on a lot of our gear. Plus, the constant roar of the AC made some of the audio almost worthless. 
While waiting on Jason to arrive at the location, we went ahead and conducted several sessions. The first EVP session downstairs yielded a couple questionable results. We're videoing. Okay. Um, so we have trifometer, two EDIs, and a periscope. And get one digital recorder going. Okay. And what was this place called again? The Eagle 501, or 501 Eagle. 501 Eagle. Yeah. Just like your jeans. Yes. Oh, oh I miss 501s. All right, Gene, you're the master of ceremonies. No pressure. Greetings and hello. My name's Gene. You may have met Matthew. We're here not to mean any disrespect. Can you come near us and talk to us? I'm gonna do a quick review. Yeah. Thank you. We're gonna yep, be doing thank this you. off and on. Then we moved upstairs and conducted a few more ITC sessions. Initially, after several years of trying to record an EVP on a device called a ReVP, it finally happened. Are you stuck here? Yeah. There's Jeff Odark. Hey. Aren't you a comedian? I am a comedian. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be funny? You know what? <laughs> Fuck you. How about, how, how dare you? <laughs> we just said, God damn it. <laughs> What's your name? Why are you playing polka in a gay bar? What's your name? <laughs> Accordion is killing me, man. How many spirits are in this building? Do you miss the eagle? So I bought this dumb hat. Not for this investigation, but obviously to make my mom super proud. I slapped it on that night as a trigger object of sorts just for this moment. After the explicit nature of some of the replies I got from my first visit, I thought I'd test these waters. Can you tell me what my hat says? I deserve that. It seems like it's just sweeping so fast. Bear witness. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Yeah, we're trying to hear you. I never got heard this box sound like this before. I wonder if there's like some sort of interference right here. Yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm frustrated with it. Let's take it on the bar and just see if it sounds different there. 
Did you ever meet a Brian Smart here? Do you know who Brian Smart really was? Yeah, I hear you. What's up, my shirt? Were you a victim of her Baumeister? What's your name? Are you, are you stuck or do you choose to stay here? Did Herb hurt one of your friends? What happened to you? Where's your body at? Any final word before I shut this down? We then went downstairs to take a break while awaiting Jason's arrival. And I know on my first 501 video, I took a pretty hard knock at ITC apps. And rightly so. I'm more skeptical of them now more than ever. But if you ask the veteran ITC community if there is one app that is most credible and feasible for yielding real communication, hands down, it's Echovox. There are plenty of videos out there on the how it was made and how to set it, so I'm not laying all that out here. But I want to preference this segment by saying we really weren't intending to do an Echovox session at all. But Jeff had it on his phone and was messing with his settings, and soon we started to hear direct and intelligent responses, some of which were very chilling. What's your name? Oh, is that what it's in? Mm -hmm. What's your name? You, fuck off? What are you telling us to fuck off for? Just kidding? Who was Brian Smart? Who was Brian Smart? What kind of bar was this? Gay bar. Gay bar. Usually something about cocks. I'm specifically interested if her Baumeister got any of his victims from the Eagle 501.
Were you a victim of herbs? He would take people back to his house and, and have erotic asphyxiation and sex, and he'd kill them. Does that ring a bell? Did a victim of her Baumeister just ask us to go look up his parents? That premise is 100% heartbreaking. Maybe they want their parents, hoping they can help their plight, or they wanted us to pass along a message. This is very, very sad. Was Herb ever at the 501? Were you a victim of herbs? at your untimely end due to herb or or something else we feel terrible about that is there any way we can help you could you give us your name and maybe we could use your name to get your message out Is this bar haunted? Yes. yes. Who's here? Often. Does the spirit of Herb come here? Right. Yes. Do you, do you have anything else to say to us? Can you leave if you want? Do you know the name of Jeff's friend that uh, is a psychic? Do you know her name? What is her? I asked this because on the way to the 501, Jeff called a friend who's a psychic to ask if she had any impressions of the location where he was heading. Without any knowledge of the place, she spoke of blood, BDSM, rape, and picked up on the energy of a serial killer. Unfortunately, none of that was caught on camera, but the accuracy made us all shudder. 
I'm just gonna say to Jeff. I said Jeff. Shut up. What do you want to shut up? Did you say don't freak out? Who else is here? Great, Kim. This is the second time a Ed or Edward has come up. Are you associated with this building at all? Did the cops come in here and take advantage of the situation? Yep. yep. Where did this take place at? Where did he murder them at? Did Herb have a help of a cop? Was there more than one person? Disappear. disappear. Help him disappear. Burn it. Did they burn the body? Right, Q Ray. Do you know someone that went with Herb, or are you just telling us what you heard about Herb? Prove it to. Are the spirits here? Do you know how, how many people Herb killed? Not great, but not. They found him. Dumped him? All right, guys, we cracked the case. We go home now. <laughs> Ice pick. I just heard that Herb choked his victims. Did he stab them too? Herb. We'll try to make more sense of this later. We appreciate this exchange. All right, well, hopefully you'll, you'll talk to us more later. Thank you so much for communicating. Thank you. Man, I think we got a, a shit ton right there. You know what? Yeah. That was a lot. That was a lot. Definitely. That Echo Vox session is a lot to unpack. So many implications on what this audio could entail. It's been speculated that Herb could have had help with his victims. And also, Larry Eiler, otherwise known as the Highway Killer, another murderer who targeted gay men and was into bondage and had a leather fetish to use accomplices too. Larry began his killing spree in 1982. He would pick up his victims, restrain them, and brutally stab them, and at times disembowel them, and leave the corpses alongside highways. One victim who survived noted in court that he saw a knife and an ice pick. I don't think it's a mistake that some of these details came through in the session at the 501. While searching for the killer during that period, police often raided gay bars looking for suspects and informants. I have no doubt that this location was also visited by the police, Eiler's victims, and or possibly Larry himself. Larry was apprehended August 21st, 1984. I also find it peculiar that the I-70 Stranglers, aka Herb, span of crimes went from 1980 to 1991 overlapping with Larry. Could they have worked together? Or at least maybe Larry was somewhat inspired by Herb's work or in competition and just took it to the next level by mutilating his victims. And I also think that Herb had some help with his victims in his reign of terror at Fox Hollow. Obviously, it couldn't have been Larry, as he was incarcerated by the time her moved into Fox Hollow 91, coincidentally when the I-70 Strangler came off the road, so to speak.
but a police informant who went by the name Tony Harris, known also as the one who got away, got away from being another casualty of Herb's, when recounting his experiences of Fox Hollow, often felt that Herb was trying to signal an assistant of sorts. Sadly, we'll never know. After we quit filming this session, Jean's millimeter that was sitting on the shelf, its flashlight inexplicably came on without the aid of the required on button. That definitely would take a stronger presence to make happen. Here's Jean demonstrating. The next session, we were still waiting on Damn Jason. So Gene tried his S-Box, and then he turned on the Afterlight Box made by Extreme Senses. Here's where the audio quality really gets sketchy, and I do apologize. You'd like to try something different? Tell us about the cop. You were talking about her Baumeister earlier. Jason's on his way. You want to talk to him? You, you um, won't believe the fucking echo box session we had. That's what he was telling me. It was off the wall. What did he say? Uh, her this. Cops were involved. The cop owned the bar. The cop owned the fat woman. That's right. I forgot about that. That is right. That's right. That's right. I forgot and all about it. Thing. It wasn't zoned to be a bar either. It was toll under the table payment. Yes, to that's a, right. To be a bar. I forgot all in fact, about it. Got a hold of the place. They had to rezone it so we could sell alcohol here. Yeah, we were missing that earlier. This is got all about a cop. When when we were somebody talking about in here, and I had to call the police. Because I started going through the place by myself like a dumbass. And I got about halfway through up the stairs, and I go, I should probably call the police because if someone's here, yeah, you know. So the cops show up, and there were two of them. And the whole time, we're like searching room to room, and all they could talk about was her Bauermeister. Right. Like, you know what happened here, right? I'm like, yes, I'm quite aware. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah, I forgot about the call. Yeah, he owned, he owned the bar for a long time. <laughs> so this is the area I was talking about where I saw the shadow. I told you that. I was pretty much. I'm going to turn this off for a minute, okay? I'll be back later. I thank you for your time. We're going to talk about stuff. And again, thank you. What about Jason? Okay, well, thank you. We heard footsteps above us, and we went to the stairwell and started asking questions. 
Do you want us to come up? What is up with all these crazy laughs? Can you make a noise? After the knocking, it was time to return upstairs. I set up a laser grid against the wall, and as I did so, I caught a couple EVPs off my camera's microphone while the guys were in the next room over. I tried to utilize a few devices to no avail due to interference. Gene turned his afterlight box back on, and I bounced back and forth here between different cameras based on the audio quality. Are you still here? Get up here. Safe. It is. Are you stuck here? Do you like? Do you like to leave? Everybody come into this room. Maybe they can't see us. No, we can't see you. If you walk in front of the camera. interacting with you. You don't what? You don't like us? Blood. Blood? Are you talking about the wall that they used to chain people up on? Is that the wall? Chains. Sorry for talking over you. Is Herb here? What do you need to do so you can pass on? Definitely crazy. I got some thumb cuffs here. Place you in them. Did you say that? Watch. What the fuck? 
do that say? Just shut up or shut me up. Oh. oh. Thank you. Did I see your shadow? And I noticed, yeah, they said he noticed. Thank you. I noticed you. More validation to the claims of the short shadow figure moving about the space. We step into the grid, please. Like you did a second ago. It doesn't hurt. Whoa, thank you. No, okay. Was that a... Who keeps setting the light on? Whoa. You getting excited? I don't know how much. This last one back here. We were getting some blips on the display screen that we attempted to debunk. The GS2 laser grid array from GhostStop not only counts the number of events that break through the grid, but it also displays their distance and temperature. Whoa! Holy Light shit! Light it up! Light you, it up! Is that you? Look at you! That's beautiful. Can you see each other? Are you still here? Yes, he is. Do you like it up here? Is it safe? It is. I want to try something else too. We'll walk more far back. See if it turns yellow or blue. Didn't do anything this time. Really? Yeah. Can you get closer? Can I come over there with you? And as I stood in the grid, my alleged friends encouraged the spirits to touch me. I did hear some shuffling behind me, which was startling. Then I received an explicit message. If you're there, walk over walk. by. Walk by Matthew and see if you can. There you go. Yep. Go ahead. He, somebody said, go ahead. I'll give you a ghost dollar if you tap him on the shoulder. Touching? You scared him? Do you have any final words to tell me about her Baumeister? We appreciate your talking to us. I hope you enjoyed it. So we're gonna turn this off for now.
We can only speculate on the horrors monsters like Herb Baumeister and Larry Eiler inflicted on their victims and their victims' families and the ramifications for the LGBTQ community. It's obvious that with Herb's every step inside the walls of Fox Hollow Farm and the 501 Eagle, his atrocities etched a lasting trail of trauma and death. We can only hope that all affected by these terrors find peace and the unidentified who are lost can find their way back home.